guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at five cool features or use cases for Windows 11 Copilot. Recently made a video covering Windows 11 23H2 where I talked about, in my opinion, 10 of the best features that they implemented in that release, one of those being Copilot. I did kind of emphasize that I was on the fence about Copilot and I might not use it a whole lot. It's kind of grown on me, guys. It's pretty cool. Um, one of the big things about Copilot, in my opinion, is if you're not paying for a GPT Plus subscription, this is a great way to leverage some of those uh, GPT-4 large language model features. And I'll show you some of that here in a second. So the top five things about Copilot in Windows 11. Let's jump right in, guys. So the first one is the fact that you can basically use GPT-4 with this without a paid subscription is really cool. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we were in GPT 3.5, which is the current free version, it doesn't have access to the internet. It can't browse. You can't add plugins to get around that. This guy, however, accesses GPT 4 on the back end, so you can do it right here. And we don't have to open up a browser. We can just launch Copilot directly from the taskbar, or we can use the Windows combination of Windows key plus C to open Copilot. If you guys are on 23H2 and you don't see Copilot, check out my video. I'll put a card up here. I made a video on how to get that reactivated in Windows 11 23H2. So if you need that, it's up there. Check it out. All right, so let's use a use case here for the GPT-4-like features. And I'll just say, search the internet and give me information. And I love this tab completion thing, too. It's cool. Makes me uh, think I'm back on a Cisco terminal here. Information about the latest news in uh, electric. Let's see if I can spell this early in the morning. Electric vehicles, electric vehicle technology. Okay, let's see what happens here. So as you see guys, it's kind of given us bullet point style news. So the first bullet point is San Diego Gas and Electric. San Diego Gas and Electric and Toyota of North America are collaborating on a new project. So that'll go on and then if we want more information on any of these, it's just like GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 for that matter. It's a two-way conversation so we can ask it, okay, elaborate on the uh, San Diego Gas and Electric and Toyota project. So pretty cool. I'm going to stop it there. Um, you can obviously ask it to condense that or elaborate, whatever you need. So really cool feature there. Um, another thing that's awesome is that we can leverage Dolly 3 from Copilot. So let me give you an example. Draw a photorealistic picture of a dog wearing a top hat. The image should be funny and light. So again, you don't get Dolly 3 for free. If you have GPT Plus, they threw it in there. Again, 20 bucks a month. But if you don't have that right here in Copilot, plus maybe you're just on your computer and you don't want to launch GPT, this is a great way just to get a quick image here, guys. Look at that. We've got four choices right here. And as you see, made with Bing Image Creator, powered by Dolly 3. So pretty cool stuff. That was the first use case is being able to leverage those uh, GPT Plus type of features right here from the Copilot. All right, the next one we're going to look at, guys, or at least talk about is task efficiency. Um, Copilot can do things like organize your windows. This one I'll have a, add a caveat, though. I think there may be an issue right now. Um, as I mentioned before, I had to use a workaround to get Copilot reactivated on 23H2. The reason they took it off, at least my understanding, is there's some type of bug with multiple monitors right now. So I did try the, um, it's called Snap My Windows. It'll use the auto snap feature and it'll kind of organize your desktop for you if you have a bunch of windows open. Uh, sounds really cool, but didn't work for me. I'm guessing that has something to do with the multi-monitor bug but we can still use the task efficiency use case for other things. Like we could tell it to turn on dark mode. Maybe you want that on. Turn on dark mode. So that's pretty cool. I'm a fan of dark mode. 
Let me know if you guys are. I like Batman mode. It's cool. All right, so we'll stop that, and then we'll ask it to do something else. Turn on Do Not Disturb for one hour. There we go. Focus period one of two. Gives you a five minute break. So pretty cool. Um, we can ask it to launch programs as well. So you can tell it's like open Word, open Chrome. It'll launch the program. It doesn't yet interact with applications, but I have a feeling that may be coming soon. All right guys, so that's some examples of task efficiency. Uh, you could also do things like ask it to change your background. I haven't tried that yet, but let's give it a shot. Why not? Change my background image. There you go. Opens right up and we can pick a different image. So as you can see, pretty cool. I mean... Is it saving us a ton of time? It could if you're not familiar with Windows 11 and where to click and all that, and it's probably a little bit faster than going through all the menus. So pretty cool. I'll give it two thumbs up on the task efficiency and definitely two thumbs up on that first feature we talked about, which is levering the GPT-4 and Dolly 3 models uh, natively from Copilot. So good stuff. So the next one is help you with creative projects. So let's say you have a project for you know school or work and you don't know where to start. You've got writer's block. Um, just ask it to help you out. This is kind of bleeding into the GPT-4 again, but it's just something that most AI assistants can do at this point. So, I mean, you can ask Copilot ideas for inspiration, let's say for a graphic design project, where you want to generate an image based on a specific idea, let's say like a futuristic cityscape at sunset. So we kind of looked at that with a dog example, but let's just let's, let's talk to it a little bit. I'm working on a class project where I need to write an essay about a futuristic city. Can you please help me with writing? And I also need an image for the cover. I would like to have a futuristic cityscape at sunset. Welcome to the future of doing your homework. <laughs> Hopefully not. Sure, I can help you with writing an essay about a futuristic city. Here are some tips and suggestions. First, you need to decide what kind of futuristic city you want to write about. Is it a utopian or dystopian city? What are the main features and characteristics? So I won't let this run out, guys, but as you can see, this can be a very good collaborative way for you to work with Copilot to start getting the wheels turning like oh okay I didn't think of that I need to talk about the the type of futuristic city and so on and so forth and and really get the ball rolling and I think you can even tell it like hey I got you know I got writer's block and here's where I'm stuck I don't know where to start it's pretty useful in that sense so again third bullet point I give it two thumbs up uh, I give most AI models two thumbs up for creative projects uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is Accessibil accessibility and convenience. So Ki <laughs> I can't talk this morning, guys. So Copilot is easily accessible. Uh, like I said, we can launch it directly from here, or we could just hit Windows key C. I'll show you that. So I hit the Windows key and C, and boom, there's my Copilot. So again, this is obviously a step up from how we currently interact with chat GPT unless you've built some type of integration into Windows for GPT this is easier to access for sure so I would say two thumbs up for accessibility and convenience for Copilot uh, another thing is you can interact with it more directly with the Windows environment right so you can have it do things within your OS open applications um, yeah, all kinds of cool stuff there. So you can even ask it to do, you know, like take a screenshot if you don't want to open snipping tool and do all that. So definitely cool. All right, the last one, guys, is the 
versatility of the functionalities for Copilot. Um, so some examples would include changing the PC to dark mode, turning on do not disturb, uh, maybe you're doing a presentation, you don't want pop-ups popping up, uh, taking a screenshot of your desktop, summarizing a lengthy article on Microsoft Edge or Chrome, uh, writing you a short story with a specific theme, or even creating an image such as a serene koi fish pond with lily pads. So let's try a couple of those that we just talked about. And I know this kind of bleeds into the other bullet points, but I just wanted to kind of round it all out with talking about how versatile Copilot is. Take a screenshot of my desktop. I wonder if this is going to have an issue because of the dual monitor bug, but let's find out. Nope, there it is. So we can just I have tried to open the snipping tool for you, you which did. is a tool that allows you to capture a screenshot of your desktop. Please check if it is successful and follow the instructions on the screen. Pretty cool. That worked well. All right, let's just get one more image here because I think this is one of the coolest features about it, using Dolly 3 for free. So a pretty sweet hack. Not really a hack, but pretty sweet feature, right? Create an image of a serene koi fish pond with lily pads. I'll try to create that. <laughs> Boom. There it is, guys. Pretty cool stuff. So we could click on one of these to upscale it into a browser. We drag that over. There we go. So we can download that, save that, share that, whatever we want to do. All right, guys, that was, in my opinion, five of the coolest features that are accessible natively on Windows 11 using Copilot. Again, it's kind of growing on me, if you can't tell, guys. This is a very convenient way to interact with uh, artificial intelligence, large language models, and image creation tools. Uh, those being OpenAI, which in my opinion are currently the best in the industry. Let me know what you guys think. Are you a fan of Copilot? Have you used it? Are you looking forward to it? Um, did I miss some of the features that you like about it? Yeah, let me know, guys. Do you love it? Do you hate it? I'd be curious to know. Like I said, I'll probably do a series on um, the 23H2 features that I talked about in the original video. So this was the first of hopefully at least a 10-part series where I cover all of those new Windows 11 23H2 features. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you stuck around to the end, thanks a lot. Consider hitting that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of stuff, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new content. I hope you guys all have a great day. Until the next one, take care, everyone. Bye.